So you got to watch the sunrise on Midsummer Day with me. But on the way home, I took some photos and some short videos and today I'm going to share them with you. So this was Midsummer Sunrise that we're watching now. But let's take a journey through Milton Keynes on this morning of Midsummer's Day. So we start our journey on the Belvedere, a viewing mound at the top of the park that was created from the spoils of the shopping centre. The light pyramid is an electric beacon lit for national occasions. It was installed in 2012 in time for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. The previous crow's nest beacon was removed after being struck by lightning twice and is now housed at the Milton Keynes Museum. Campbell Park was named after Jock Campbell, who was the first chair of the Milton Keynes Development Corporation, the organisation responsible for designing and building Milton Keynes. There are 12 pieces of public art in the park. This one here is called Onwards and Upwards. A sculpture by Robert Koenig was commissioned in 2010 to celebrate the retirement of the Trust's then chairman, John Duggan, and was created as a representation of the growth and development of both the park and the city. It was carved from a single piece of eight metre high sweet chestnut and installed in August of 2011. We then pass the woods. And as we exit the park, we come across another sculpture, Head by Alan Jones, made out of caught and steel that weathers over time to create a textured surface. It is a simple construction made to manipulate the viewer's mind using two-dimensional silhouettes, creating an illusion of three-dimensional form. At first glance, the figure suggests a tent structure and initially seems to be entirely abstract. As people walk past, the human head slowly reveals itself. Deliberately constructed in this way by the artist to encourage park users to stop and spend time exploring. We now head over the canal bridge. This is the Grand Union Canal which goes from London to Birmingham. So I've just left uh, Campbell Park uh, over the bridge from the canal and I'm now walking into Newlands. And um, there's some new trees and lots of benches. This uh, wasn't here last time I came down this way. Uh, it has been a long while since I come down this way. But yeah, all these little trees are pretty new. Well, they're very new. Um, yeah, it's called Newlands. And if we continue down this way, we will come to uh, a place called Gulliver's Land. Um, which I will continue, but I'm not going to stop at Gulliver's Land. But yeah, but they've got all these little new trees, planted trees. I love, I, see this is why I love where I live, is the amount of trees, just look, um, I've, uh, you've, I've just shown you a load of um, photos of uh, <laughs> the park, a little screen show, um, but yes there's a lot of uh, purposely left wild flowers. Uh, there we go. So, loads of this all around here, uh, attracting the wildlife. And uh, there's, and there's people walking past. Oh, that is a conch tree, people. Uh, horse chestnut. Um, very popular around here. So, for those that don't know what conchers are. I'll show you in the winter, uh, autumn even, autumn. Um, but yeah, 
beautiful daisies and wild grasses. Uh, I'm not sure what trees these are. Uh, oh, bright sand. Bright sand! It's fully up now. Um, they could be cherries, they could be apple. They could be anything. They're all young trees. So, and I'm not very good at tree identifications. Not what we've got on the benches. For those who will not run with us anymore, you'll always be running amongst us, Redway runners. So, okay, so we have um, paths that are a combination between cycle and pedestrian paths that run all around Milton Keynes and they are a red tarmac colour uh, and they're called the Redways and I'm guessing the Redway Runners is a group of runners um, long standing group of runners that use them and it looks like all of these um, plaques have um, all of these benches have plaques so let's have a quick look at this one over here I don't know how much time I've got left on my thing there so I won't film them all. So this one says, uh, Lydia Elliot, and there's a date. Oh, it's in French. Chevalier de la Légion d'Honneur. I'm probably butchering that. She lives forever in our memories. So yes, these are memorial benches. And I know Newlands and the Tree Cathedral, well, the Tree Cathedral, is a um, wild burial ground and that's part of Newlands um, hmm. the other side of that's Gulliver's Land the other side of Gulliver's Land is the tree cathedral and I'm not going to go there today um, but yeah because that's going in the opposite direction to where I want to go which is home but yeah I thought you'd like to have a quick look at all these new trees and I'm wondering if the trees have, have also been uh, planted in memory of people or whether you can have plaques attached to them, I don't know. But there you go. As we leave Newlands, we enter Willen Lake. Willen Lake is one of Britain's largest purpose-built balancing lake. It spans around 100 acres and was created in the 70s during the development of Milton Keynes to prevent flooding from the River Ouse downstream in Newport, Pagnell and Bedford. It's controlled by Anglian Water's computer systems. The lake has sluice gates that manage excess water during heavy rain, releasing it back into the river when the levels drop. The North Lake is a wildlife habitat with areas for fish and birds. It boasts cultural landmarks like the first ever Western Peace Pagoda and a labyrinth, a medicine wheel, a Buddhist temple and a Hiroshima sculpture. We are in the South Lake. The wheelchair friendly roundabout. Pretty cool. It serves as a recreational park offering leisure and entertainment opportunities. The Big Wheel, the water park, the water activities like water skiing and boating. It also hosts a cafe and two pubs. And it is quite a nice place to go. It's still a nice stroll around the lake. And the ducks and geese and swans are waiting to be fed. They have special allocated zones to be fed nowadays. That wasn't the case when I was a kid. And the geese would swarm you. They don't seem to swarm you anymore. Which is a good thing. We've just seen uh, most of the 12 Willow Lake. And I've stopped at what is the abandoned uh, miniature railway. There used to be a little train that ran all along this track and it goes up around and through the trees and under that bridge under there and turns around and comes back again. But it does seem that it has finally been abandoned. I mean, I may be wrong, it may still run. I haven't seen it for a long time. 
I believe there's a building over there. You can just see it through the trees. Hopefully you can see it through the trees, yeah. Uh, that used to house the trains when they weren't in operation. And you can see the little turntable there, where it turned. Can you see? It? Yeah, there you go. The turntable where it turned. It's a shame, but I'm guessing huh, with all the uh, exciting things that I've shown you along the way, with the splash park and the big wheel and the play area and the water sports, they probably don't need it anymore. Oh, and something I haven't shown you, which is a little bit round the corner. I'll show you in the next photo. Dotted around the lake are these exercise equipment that do get used by joggers and cyclists, but mostly by children who think they're climbing frames. And here is the piste de resistance. No, it's not. But it's aerial extreme. It's a high up climbing frame i guess um with free jumps and everything you gotta be brave to take it on and i'd just like to point out as we move away from aero extreme that i was correct and the train track has been cut which means the train no longer runs as you can see from this sign you are allowed to fish on the lake just only in designated areas. We leave the lake under the bridge that used to be where the train turned around and we enter into Oozel Valley Park and the poplar tree plantation. The plantation is an area of land that separates the Oozel, River Oozel that is, from Willen Lake. It's a low-lying area that is planted with lines of poplar trees which absorb a lot of moisture to dry the land and those roots also bind the soil together creating a barrier between the river and the lake. This was originally designed by Milton Keynes Development Corporation's landscapers as a physical feature but also it was destined to become a French-style campsite for visitors to the lake. Unfortunately, that never happened, which is a shame because I would love to camp here and I'm sure a lot of people would. We then go over the River Oozel. So, just left Oozel Valley Park and I've entered a place called Middleton. Uh, Middleton is actually a new housing, a modern housing estate, built around the outskirts of Milton Keynes village. And if we head in this direction, this is where I'm going, we'll end up at the village. See you there. So here we are in the heart of Milton Keynes village. There you have the church, the rectory, the manor house, the, ch the school house and the farmhouse. Yes, uh, Milton Keynes was a farming village, so there was not a lot. But down the road, just down there, is the pub and the post office. All Saints Church, the church of Milton Keynes village, is old, with parts dating back to the 11th century. The present building is the 14th century, but there are parts that date back to around 12. I have a video that I recorded a few years ago that I will link below that talks more about the church. This is Ivy Cottage, a beautiful timber and thatch cottage from the 17th century. The old school built in 1850 and used until 1970. It is now a community hall and a new school was built in nearby Middleton. Down narrow pathways around the village hall are old houses. This one, Bird Cottage, is a 13th century cruck building 
with blackened timbers on the roof, suggesting a hall-style building. It is one of the oldest buildings in North Buckinghamshire, maybe an early manor, and was owned by a jobbing builder and a local woodworker until 1960s. A bus shelter with a chimney. Why? This is because it was originally a smithy. A travelling blacksmith came often and was available to shoe horses or work on tools, fix gates and fences and farming implements. The Swan Public House. This is a Grade 2 listed timber, brick and thatch building built in about the 16th or 17th century and extended in the early 20th. It has been refurbished many times. This is Nurse's Cottage. It was the home of the district nurse in the 1950s and the name stuck, but the building is much, much older, as I'm sure you can tell. And here is Southside Farm, one of the oldest and longest continuing farms. The building is 18th century. Farm workers lived in the attics. The Powell family farmed until the 1970s. Their land stretched from Oak Grove to Walton and Monkston. During 1939 to 1945, war prisoners were housed in the wood panelled attics and worked on the farm. The converted granary has a protected 14th century wall in the garden.